This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome everybody to today's long table. This is long table number 167, which is actually really astounding to think about. Um, our speaker today is returning. Um, we uh, tried uh, about a month ago or so to um, have this presentation, but there were some technical difficulties. So it is my great pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. John Tatman back uh, to talk to us today about um, Cyrenaic and coinage. Um, John is a retired physician and surgeon, and he's had a lifelong interest in numismatics. And in fact, at the moment, he is uh, currently uh, president of the San Francisco Ancient Numismatic Society, and I'm sure that many of you know him uh, from the San Francisco Society. Um, and some of his interests in numismatics uh, includes finding lost provenances, um, Greek coin overstrikes, which he'll be talking about today, um, as well as the coinage of Cyrenaica and the history of Silphium, uh, which has... Um, I'm sure many of you know, is a ancient plant that grew in North Africa until it was basically over-harvested by the Roman periods. Uh, and the ancient uh, Greeks and Romans made something akin to sort of a pickle relish or something out of it, which was hugely popular, um, which ultimately led to the um, over-harvesting of that. I'm sure John will tell us some more about that. Um, John, all yours. I'd like to thank the ANS for letting me present this long table about Cretan drams overstruck on Kyrenaica coins. I apologize to any of you who joined in when this was originally scheduled in early January, but I'm glad you could join us again today. And notice this is a third long table in Cretan coins in the past few months. In December, Federico Car Carboni discussed the coinage of Feistos and Claudia DeVito did the same for coins of Gnosis uh, last month. I will discuss which Chironaca coins were used as flans for drams of the Cretan cities of Gortina, Falasarna, and Palarina. My article on this topic is in the latest edition of AJN that was just released. Contrary to the prevailing view, I found that coins of the same weight were used as flans for the drams from these cities. Today, I'll review the project with additional focus on the process and techniques used to complete the study. Coin overstrikes can provide useful information about the chronology of overstruck coin types and their undertypes. Overstrikes also help to provide historical context and track the movement of money. During the early Hellenistic period, the number of mints and minting activity increased significantly in Crete. Overstrikes are common, using coins from other Cretan cities and foreign coins as flans. Large numbers of foreign coins are obtained by trade or mercenary services during the late third and er sorry during the late fourth and early third centuries BC. Learning Kratos by George Leriter, public. In 1966 is still the best reference for Cretan overstrikes because of a thorough analysis. Overstrikes were cataloged with undertypes identified and discussed. He also reviewed several hordes buried in south central Crete around 280 to 270 BC that included coins of Chironaca. Other Chironaca coins that arrived in, in Crete were also discussed. So to help with identifying the Chironaca undertypes for these coins, I want to review some basic silphium morphology. The appearance of silphium on Hellenistic Chironaca coins is less realistic as it became more sterilized, I'm sorry, more stylized and symmetrical. On the left is a typical reverse of the large number of autonomous didrams produced 300 to 275 BC when Magus governed Chironaca. The silphium plant has columnar rib stock, three parallel sets of leaves, and simple axillary All right, it tends to look more like a uh, electric transmission line than a silphium plant. Of course, the photo on the right is not an actual silphium plant, but it's Perula dudiana, a related species sometimes called Anatolian silphium. 
So the terminal umbel is a spherical cluster of flowers at the top of the stalk. Axillary umbels are smaller flower clusters that come off the junction of the base of the leaf with the stalk. The leaves come off the stalk in parallel and terminate in small leaflets similar to the appearance of, cel of celery. The best known Cretan overstrikes are staters that use Chironaca tetradrams as flans. This Gortina stator is a good example of an overstrike on a Chironaca tetradram. So on the obverse, is Hera seated in a tree and a bull's on the reverse. This particular coin is Monocratos Gortina 24B. It's from the 1953 Feistus Horde. If you look on the obverse to the right side, there's the outline of a top of a sulfium plant. And on the reverse at the bottom is the name Nikeos upside down. When coin image is rotated to the orientation of the undertype, it provides much better perspective to visualize residual features. On the left side, residual features of the undertype are indicated. So, on the, at the top right, you can see the outline of a face to the right and the name Nikeos. But also on the lower left, you now see a outline of uh, hair curls on the back of the neck and the left neck, the left neck truncation. On the bottom, you see the top of the sylphium plant, with the terminal ilium, the upper axillary umbels and leaves. On the right side and the upper right is the retrograde letter K and on the lower right is the retrograde letter P. So I usually use black ovals to emphasize the areas of residual undertype on the overstruck coins as you see on the right side. For this particular specimen, there's enough residual detail of the undertype to see that it's from the dyes of BMC Chironaca Kyrene 85, which is shown on the right. The black oval show the corresponding areas on the Kyrene tetradram that match the residual details still visible on the Gortina stator. There are three situations where Chironaca coins were used in Crete. As I just mentioned, tetradrams from Kyrene and Barke were obtained in relation to Thibron's invasion of Chironaca with Cretan mercenaries 323 BC. These tetradrams weighing about 13 to 13 and a half grams had about two grams trimmed off and then were used as flans for staters, mainly by Gortina and Phaistos. The second occurrence is the large number of Kyrene autonomous diagrams and a, a photo shown in the lower right. And they're found in hordes in South Central Crete that were buried around 280 to 270 BC. Matter of fact, most specimens known today are probably from these and other Cretan hordes. Finally, less than 50 recorded drams of Gortina, Phallosarna, and Polarina are overstruck on Kyrene coins. These are the coins we'll focus on for the remainder of the presentation. The writer listed certain drams of Gortina, Phallosarna, and Polarina, each from a single obverse die that used Chironaca coins as flans. These dram types are shown at the bottom. On the lower left is Gortina 92. The obverse has the head of Hera to the right, the reverse has a bull budding to the right. Thalassarna 1 through 4 are all from the same obverse die, but use different reverse dies. The head of Artemis Dictina is to the right on the obverse, and the trident's on the reverse. The obverse of Polarina 1 has a head of a bull facing, and the reverse has a spearhead. The writer concluded that Kyrene diagrams, like the ones found in the Cretan hordes, were trimmed by about two grams and used as flans for, the, for these drams, and this is still the prevailing opinion. 
I first got interested in this topic when I was preparing a presentation on Kyrenaica didrams and found this coin online. It's a Thalassarna dram from the Traeger collection and the description said, overstruck on a Kyrene didram. And if we look on the averse in Artemis hair, you can see part of a silphy implant and on the reverse, the lower left part of the uh, trident crossbar, you see it nose and lips. So if the coin rotated to the undertype orientation, on the reverse, there's a uh, face looking to the right that can be seen in the black oval. On the obverse is part of a sylphium plant which shows part of the stock, a middle left leaf and an axillary umbel. And when I looked at this image, I thought, the axillary umbel is very close to the leaflet. So I wonder if I can tell which of the Kyrene didrams was used as the undertype. This slide's crowded, but it's intentional because I want to show the major varieties of Kyrene didrams and the Cretan hordes that have obverses with a head facing to the right. As I checked through all of them, I realized none had sylphium implants with the axillary umbel so close to the leaflets. So what other Kyrenaica coin could have been used? I noticed that an uncommon Kyrenaica coin about the same weight as these Cretan drams looked like it could be the undertype because the leaflets are so close to the axillary umbels. Now, these coins of uncertain weight standard have been referred to uh, by as different denominations, like an attic octobal or a further reduction or weight of the uh, uh, Kyrene didram, or even Cretan standard drams. On the obverse, the head of Harry's paramon is to the right, and on the reverse is a sylphium plant. These coins are by BMC Kyrenaica 266 and 267. Here are the four coins in the catalog. On the left side are the two coins from the BM collection, uh, BMC 266 at the upper left and BMC 267, which was in the Weber collection at the bottom. On the right side are two specimens from the Hermitage collection. Uh, 266B, the uh, coin on the lower right, uh, was later sold and ended up being um, SNG Locket 3473. Besides the weight and being anepigraphic, these coins have a few other things that make them different from contemporary Kyrenaica coins. On the obverse, the most obvious feature that differentiates this coin from other contemporary coins is the diadem with a front ornament on Hermes' head. The ornament's probably a side view of a sun disc, Uraeus, or some other ornament. On the reverse, the sylphium plant is compact and stylized, but it has some distinguishing features. The terminal umbel is small, sometimes only a circle of beads around the central sphere. Two pairs of axillary umbels have simple spheres at the end. Three leaves on each side of a rib stalk are short. They come off the stalk at close to 90 degree angle and end in three drooping leaflets, which are usually in close proximity to the top of axillary umbels. So another thing to keep in mind when looking at undertypes, oftentimes the, un the easiest part to identify are the features of the outer edge of an object because they tend to be left as outlines. So here's the Phallosarna dram from the Traeger collection again. On either side is the BMC 266E specimen. You can see the remaining details of the undertype shown in the black ovals are a die match for BMC Kyrenaica 266B. Now, some of the dies used for these coins are uh, very similar. So I made 50% transparent images of the undertype varieties 
So I could overlay them on the DRAM photos for comparison. These semi-transparent images also help to find other residual traces of the undertype that might not have been obvious. For example, on the left side, on the uh, lower left, there's a, a curved line between the trident prong. It's actually the back edge of the ram's horn and not the back of the head like I originally thought. I also found this Polarina dram online. It's from the Philipson collection and listed as on a Kratos Polarina 1C. Again, part of the undertype coin can be seen on both sides. When the obverse is rotated to the undertype orientation, there's a face outline with a diadem ornament at the top, just like the BMC 266 obverse. However, on the reverse, the remaining silphy implant details don't look like any of the reverses for the types in BMC Tyranaca. So looking at enlargement of the two coin obverses, it's obvious the details on the DRAM are an exact match for the BMC 266 avert. So I needed to look for additional reverses of the BMC 266 coins. This coin from the BNF collection has a BMC 266 outburst, but a more traditional style of sulfur implant on the reverse. And the two are compared. The Polarina DRAM undertype is a die match for the BNF specimen reverse. Now I knew I was on to something after I'd found two of the Cretan DRAMs used BMC 266 coins as flans. I decided to do a study. First, I checked the illustrated specimens on Monte Kratos and saw that several could also have BMC 266 or 267 coins as undertype. Then I found more examples from these specific dies. Since I wasn't able to examine the coin in person because this was during COVID, uh, digital images were obtained and examined for the residual undertype and compared with BMC 266 and 267 varieties. I also evaluated contemporary Cretan weight drams of these and other cities to see if there's any sign of a Kyrenaica coin used as an undertype. When I reviewed the relevant literature, I thought that no one else had recognized the undertype for these drams before. Then I found an article by Stanley Robinson in the 1915 Numismatic Chronicle where he identified that BMC Crete Polarina 10 dram is overstruck on these coins. These art, this series of four articles in the 1915 Numismatic Chronicle were Robinson's groundwork for BMC Chironaca that was published in 1927. It's still the standard reference for the pointing to Kyrenaeco almost a century later. So these earlier articles are, are rarely read. However, when Robinson cataloged these coins as Kyrene 266 and 267, he now thought they represented a 25% weight reduction of the, of the contemporary diagram due to an unspecified short-lived attempt change the silver to gold ratio to 12 to 1. But he didn't mention the overstrike. And since it wasn't mentioned in BMC Kyrenaica, his earlier observation was apparently forgotten for almost a century. This is a BMC Crete Polarinum 10 on the right side. And it's also a Monte Kratos uh, Polarina 1B. On the obverse, in the inside the ovals on, on the uh, right side, uh, sorry, on the left side, you see the pattern of hair curls on the back of the head match the BMC 266 obverse shown at the left. The same with the neck truncation at the bottom. The residual self implant details on the reverse are the same styles BMC 266 and 267 reverse. But I can't make an exact die match with any of the known reverses. If you look at the 
lower right umbel. It appears to be coming off the sock. And all, all, all the known specimens, the, um, the bottom of the axillary umbel is uh, coming off at the junction of the uh, leaf and the uh, stalk. So there must be at least one other reverse dye that was used. This Gortina dram from Munich is the only example of Gortina 92 and Money Krator. When the image is rotated, residual details at the very top edge show a diadem ornament with two of the front hair curls like the BMC 266 obverse. On the reverse, there's only an axillary umbel on the edge of the sylphium stock, which is not enough to match with any specific BMC 266 reverse. Drams from Polarina tend to have more residual undertype detail than the drams of the other two cities. Both of these specimens listed in Monte Kratos from the Stuttgart and Berlin Mund cabinets match BMC 266 dye type. On the left side, see the back of the head and, and the neck, neck truncation. And again, the uh, pattern of hair curls matches the BMC 266 obverse. The right middle leaflet, right side of the lower stem and the right lower leaf of the sofam plant on the reverse are a match for the reverse dye of a BMC Kyrenaica 266A. The Berlin specimen on the right side shows the head uh, facing to the right and the uh, left side of the sylphium plant on the reverse, which matches the BNF specimen. These Phallosarna drams from the Dreer and Dewing collection were not listed in Monte Kratos, but each had enough undertype detail to identify BMC 266 coins. For the Dreer specimen on the left, a face can be seen between the trident prongs with a diadem ornament at the very top edge. On the reverse, there's a top edge of a of the terminal LM and upper right leaflet of a sylphium plant. And on the right side is the left middle leaf and lower left axillary umbel. Again, this is a match for the BNF specimen. For the doing a specimen on the right, there is a outline of a face to the right. Again, you can see the outline of the diadem ornament at the top. However, there's no residual detail on the uh, reverse that can be identified. So it is a match for the BMC Kyrenaica 266 obverse, but the um, reverse is uncertain. Of course, there always seems to be at least one coin that didn't seem to fit the narrative. A writer described BMC Crete Thalassarna 4, shown here, as having the outline of a nose and forehead to the left on the obverse, which would exclude BMC 266 and 267 coins. However, when I rotate the obverse in the opposite direction, you can see on the right side, it could also be the outline of an upper face to the right. Unfortunately, there's so little detail remaining and no other features anywhere else on the obverse to give a clue that it's just not possible to make a definitive identification. When you look at the reverse in the center, it is obvious that this is a Kyrenaica coin because there is the remain of the uh, left middle axillary umbel uh, on the trident prong. When I was looking at these coins, I did have to consider two other rare Kyrenaica coins of about the same weight. Coin on the left is the same style and axillary symbols as one of the Kyrene autonomous diagrams and other coins from this time with the Sosus monogram. So on the obverse is the head of Hermes Paramon to the left. 
The reverse is a selfie implant with a star in the upper left and the uh, sigma omega iota monogram for Sosis uh, on the upper right. Because of its relationship to these, these uh, other coins of uh, Chiron Acres, uh, probably uh, minted uh, sometime between uh, 300 to 294 BC. The anepigraphic coin on the right used the same obverse die for a heavier diagram, usually attributed to Magus independent rule. On the reverse is a selfie implant with a palm tree to the left. However, I didn't find any Cretan drams that may have been overstruck on either of these two particular coins. This table summarizes the findings for the 55 drams evaluated in the study by city. The columns show the number of specimens by my ability to identify the undertype. The first column is for the seven specimens that have enough detail for a BMC 266 die match. The second column is for another seven coins that have a BMC 266 coin as the plan, but an exact die match is not possible. The third column is for coins that have a Chironaca undertype, usually because some part of the selfie implant can be identified, but there's not enough to confirm a BMC 266 coin. The next column is for examples that BMC 266 or 267 obverses are possible, but no selfie implant can be seen. The fifth column shows that there were no specimens that had any residual details that could exclude BMC 266 or 267 as an undertype. The last column is for about half of the specimens reviewed that had no identifiable traces of the undertype even though almost all had some evidence of overstriking. So half the coins had identifiable undertype remnants, 40% are Chironica undertypes, and a quarter are the BMC 266 undertypes. As I mentioned earlier, the Polarina drams tend to have more undertype details. So of the 11 drams evaluated, they account for half the specimens identified as BMC 266 coins. I could only find four of the Gortina 92 drams to evaluate, so I assume BMC 266 and 267 coins were used as flans. The rest of my discussion, despite the small number. Most of the drams in the study are the Palasarna drams. I originally thought there were more when I checked out auction catalog, but I found several have been in previous cells that were not mentioned in the description, which brought the total to 40. So here's an example. This is one of two Phallosarna drams of this die type in the ANS collection. Both are from the new request, but I noticed this one had additional problems. You see the uh, image on the uh, right from the uh, Bruder Ager catalog in um, 1912. Of, so this is the sale of uh, the Prowl collection. And um, it, as even though it's a photo of a cast, you still see that uh, uh, there are several features on the coin that, that show that this is the same coin. This is also a typical example that many of the coins examined appear to have traces of overstriking on both sides, even though there's not enough to make out any detail. And so this is much more obvious on the, the digital image from the um, uh, ANS. Some, um, um, some slight features on the on, um, Artemis uh, cheek and on the neck, and uh, also on the uh, right side and at the bottom. You see some uh, changes across the trident prong on the reverse, but again, I couldn't make any match with a, uh, to try to identify a specific coin, but it still um, is evidence that these coins were overstruck. So for the overstruck drams, only one obverse die was used by each city for these drams overstruck on BMC 266 coins. 
Thalassarna used four reverse dyes. Polarina used one and the same for Gortina. None of these drams have been reported in hordes from Crete or other locations. There are similar dram types for each city that are sometimes overstruck, but none are known with Chironaca undertype. So these appear to be the only dyes that were used to overstrike Chironaca coins. For the BMC Chironaca Kyrene 266 and 267 coins, BMC 266 undertype is identified for each of these dram types. No undertypes from the BMC 267 on first die were identified, but probably were also used as flans. At least there's no reason to think that they weren't. No examined specimens exclude the possibility of these coins as an undertype. There are very few recorded specimens, probably less than a dozen. None are from recorded hordes, but I'm not aware of any having a known fine spot. So once these coins were identified as the undertypes for Crete and Dram, there were several questions that still needed to be answered. These Chironaca coins are difficult to place chronologically compared to other contemporary types of the late fourth century BC to the mid third century BC due to their weight being anapographic and unusual features like the diadem ornament. Robinson dated the coins sometime during the rule of Magus based mainly on style. Now the coins are anapographic, so they may not have been produced for local use or even could have been struck by an unspecified mint or authority other than Kyrene. The use of these coins as flans for the Cretan drams revives Robinson's original suggestion that they produced the same weight specifically for trade with Crete or as payment for Cretan mercenary services. So how did these coins end up in Crete, specifically the cities of Gortina, Falasarna, and Polarina? There's a significant increase in trade between Chironaca and Crete during Hellenistic times. But why would Chironaca pay silver coins specifically to these three Cretan cities? Chironaca had almost always exported agricultural products, including its most famous silphium, around the Mediterranean. Except for Crete, very few silver coins are found outside Chironaca. So while it's possible that these coins were used for trade, it just doesn't seem likely that the silver would be used only for trade with these three cities in Crete. The use of a limited mintage of coins as under types of coins that use only one obverse die suggests a short period of availability. And this is most consistent with payments for a specific purpose. Since Cretan mercenaries were another source of silver, what events could account for mercenary payments like higher naked to only these three cities? This slide lists the event in Chironaca from 323 to 246 BC when mercenaries may have been present. The only documentation from ancient sources about Cretan mercenaries in Chironaca was when they took part in Thibron's invasion in 323 BC. First, they may also been part of Ptolemy's army that arrived and defeated Thibron. However, there's a good possibility that Cretan mercenaries were present for any or even all of these subsequent conflicts on the list over the next 50 years. So there were two revolts against Ptolemaic rule. One was at 313 BC and the other was from 305 to 300 BC. In between the two revolts, Ophelius uh, governed Chironaca uh, for Ptolemy, and at one point he joined with a, a Gothicles for an attack on uh, Carthage, which uh, ended up being a disaster. However, it is documented that he um, used mercenaries from Crete, um, specifically from uh, Athens. Uh, but it's possible that Crete mercenaries are also accompanying them. After the 305 to 300 revolt, 
I think this governed uh, Kyrenaica for Ptolemy. When in 274 BC, when he sided with the uh, Seleucids, he did invade Egypt and uh, probably used Crete mercenaries at this time. After Magus' death, 250 BC, there was a short period of time when a, a koinon of the Kyrenaica cities was formed before the uh, Ptolemaic rule was uh, reestablished in 246 BC. These overstruck Cretan drams are usually dated somewhere between 300 to 270 BC. We have to be careful because some of the assumed association with the hoarded heavier die drams has some influence on the dates. It still seems most likely they were struck sometime um, during the um, rule of Magus. So a little bit more information on Magus. He's the stepson of Ptolemy I. He governed Kyrenaica for a stepfather after the 305 to 300 revolt until after Soter's death, 283 BC. Soon after Ptolemy II assumed power in Egypt, Magus became independent of Ptolemaic rule, and he actually sided with the Seleucids for several years. In 274 BC, Magus invaded Egypt but returned to Kyrenaica after several months. There's no direct evidence that Crete mercenaries accompanied him, but some were, were almost certainly with him. Magus reconciled with Ptolemy II around 260 BC, and he died in 250 BC. So two treaties from Hellenistic Crete may shed some light on the relationship between Magus and these cities in Crete. The first treaty in the uh, first half of the third century BC between Magus and the Aurei Koinon referred to an alliance between Magus and Gortina already in place. The first quarter of the third century, Cleonemus of Sparta brokered an alliance between Talisarna and Polarina, and apparently these two cities had been in a conflict for several decades before. So what are the implications of these treaties? Well, Gortina had an alliance with Magus while Talisarna and Polarina became allied with each other. They may also have been allied with Gortina because of Spartan influence. These alliances were made by 274 BC all three cities could have provided mercenaries for Magus when he invaded Egypt. Regardless, Magus' independent rule of Kyrenaica was the most likely time these coins were paid specifically to these three cities, probably because of these treaties. Now, Magus would have needed thousands of mercenaries to oppose the larger Ptolemaic army. And a significant number may have been from Crete. So even though this expedition uh, got all the way to the Nile and lasted for several months, it means that there was a, a, a large uh, amount of payments would be, need to be paid for mercenary services. This probably explains how the heavier weight diagrams ended up in Cretan hordes because they were probably used to pay for this campaign. Now, the BMC 266 and 267 output from three adverse dies would only pay uh, less than uh, 500 mercenaries a dram a day for about three months. So this uh, certainly was not uh, enough coinage produced to uh, pay for uh, all the mercenary services that are required for this expedition. They weren't paid during this Egyptian expedition. They're probably still sent to these three cities sometime during Magus's independent rule, again, because of the treaties. So considering the findings of the study, this shows the events in Kyrenaica that are most likely related to the presence of Kyrenaica coins in Crete due to mercenary payments. The uh, Kyrenaica tetradrams uh, were overstruck about 322 to 320 BC and are related to Sibron's invasion of Kyrenaica in 323. For the autonomous diagrams found in hordes of the overstruck BMC Kyrenaica 266 and 267 coins, 
they're most likely related to Magus' uh, time of independent rule of Pyrenaica and perhaps uh, his invasion of Egypt 274 BC. I found very interesting that both the Chironaca tetragrams and BMC 266 were overstruck by Cretan coins, but none have been found in hoards. Well, the heavier didrams were hoarded, but now we know they were not overstruck. So in conclusion, examine a Monte Kratos, Rotina 92, Phallosarna 1 through 4, Polarina 1 drams revealed that BMC 266 coins of similar weight, not trimmed heavier weight didrams, were used as flans, some if not all the time. The BMC 266 267 type was probably minted around 280 to 274 BC when Magus was independent of Ptolemaic rule. These coins most likely arrived in Gortina, Phallosarna, and Polarina during time of Magus independent, perhaps related in some way to the invasion of Egypt in 274 BC. If so, these Cretan drams would have been struck somewhere between 275 to 270 BC. This study ended up having almost ideal study conditions for evaluating the endotype. There's only one outburst die for each of the dram overstrike types. This Specific coin type uh, used as flans was uh, from a small number of dyes. There's a small total of numbers of specimens recorded, and many of these specimens are already cataloged. Digital images were available for almost all the uh, specimens, and a significant portion of the specimens have recognizable undertypes. In retrospect, it was much easier to identify the coins used as flans for these Cretan drams than it was to determine the reason that the BMC 266 and 267 coins were produced and ended up in Crete. I'd like to thank Wolfgang Fischer Bosser, Mary Lannan, and David McDonald for their advice and encouragement as I was doing the study. Of course, this study would not have been possible without information and images kindly provided. By these list by the listed institutions and individuals. Thank you. Wow, John, that was fantastic. It really is a fascinating study. Um, I have to say, well done. And and this is uh, soon to appear in print. I hope. Uh, actually, <laughs> it's like plugging for an advertisement. Uh, it was uh, published in the uh, in this most recent uh, oh, AJN. Yeah, yeah, that's right which I have not yet had a chance to read. So I'm looking forward to taking a closer look at that. Um, really, I have to say, congratulations on uh, a, a very well done study. Um, one thing I, I do want to bring to everybody's attention, if you're not already familiar with this, there is a very useful database of Greek overstrikes. I just um, put this into the chat. Uh, this is part of a large uh, European Research um, Council funded project called Silver, which um, involves um, a number of our colleagues in Europe, including Francois de Calatay, who has um, been very interested in overstrikes for quite a bit of time. And he's compiled a database, which they then digitized and published on this, uh, uh, on this web page. Um, and if you take a look at that Overstrikes uh, database page, you'll see that um, Crete always, it seems, has something going on uh, in terms of Overstrikes. It's one of these places that does tend to overstrike a lot of coinage. Um, I'm, I'm sure that there are some questions. We'd uh, be happy to- well, I'd like to expand there. on that, Peter, and that, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, Francois was, was sort of very helpful when I uh, reached out to him because I, you know, he is uh, one of the world's experts on uh, 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 overstrikes, and I know he collaborated with uh, David McDonald. He was a very kind with uh, uh, providing me with information and telling me what I thought. And in return, I will be uh, adding uh, the coins that I've identified uh, uh, to the database at some point. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope so, because obviously it's going to significantly increase the number of coins uh, overstruck and in, in Crete. Um, 
Are, are there any questions from any of our audience members? Hi, it's Richard Belson. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Rick. Hi. First, John, I want to congratulate you on a fabulous presentation. And secondly, it is published in the American Journal of Numismatics, but do you have any monographs that you can send to people upon request? Or Oh, uh, yes, I do. And I'd, I'd be glad to, uh, to send one to anyone that requests. Um, obviously, if you don't have access to the journal, you didn't need my email ad address, which uh, is best to contact at John Tatman at Comcast.net. Uh, but I do have an off print. Uh, you know, that's usually not uh, released, like put on the academy, Academia EDU site uh, until uh, about a year or so after the uh, book has been published. And uh, so I will be adding it sometime. I'd certainly be glad to send anyone an off. Uh, I did want to, unless there were other questions, I did want to mention uh, something I didn't know if I'd have time to bring out, but that was looking at other uh, other contemporary Cretan coins that uh, might have been um, overstruck on Chironica coins, because uh, it isn't specifically mentioned in the article, but I did end up uh, examining a large number of these to see if I could find any, and um, um, you know, I just couldn't find any examples of uh, Chironica coin used as plans um, because of, um, um, you know, the just limited to, to these three specific die types. And because of the treaty between Magus and the Orii, I specifically looked at the, all the coins I could find of the uh, Orii cities like uh, Elios, uh, Lissos, and uh, Tara. And um, they not only don't show any sign of a pyrenic, but they tend to be lighter weight, uh, usually less than five grams. The same is true for the uh, coins from um, contemporary drams from Thalassarna and Palarina. However, Gortina drams tend to be about the same weight where there's uh, uh, several other uh, varieties uh, from around the same time. Again, I, I couldn't find any um, uh, any other coins uh, that were overstruck on the uh, Chironic coins, but it's kind of part of the background you need to do for a study is, is to make sure that you aren't uh, aren't missing other possibilities. Indeed. Are there any other questions from anyone? So, John, what's next? Oh, oh. So, I was hoping that as this is, uh, you know, get some attention uh, by people seeing this, or uh, certainly by reading the article, that. Uh, there may be some other um, uh, of these coins that I wasn't I wasn't able to find during my search. Mm. Although I did check with uh, Federico Carboni and uh, Manola uh, Stefanakis about the respective coins because they've both done so much work. Uh, Federico with uh, Gortina and right. Manola with a uh, um, Palerina, but they just weren't aware of any other examples either uh, beyond what I could find. Um, but I'd like to actually see one of these coins in person sometime. All I've looked at is digital images from all over the world. And I am working on uh, uh, another study, although it, it won't be quite so different, but kind of identifying uh, uh, some of the specific uh, Chironica tetradrams that were used to overstrike these um, um, Gortina staters. Yeah. Now the, uh, the coinage of that area, you know, North Africa and, and Crete, you know, really is quite fascinating. And, and they all, uh, you know, both areas have their, their oddities. You know, I was uh, once again recently digging into the ANS's collection of coins of Cyrene, you know, North Africa as part of um, a, a paper that I wrote for a conference in Padua, you know, one of our colleagues there at the University of Padua, uh, Michele Asolate, you know, occasionally has conferences on um, coinages of uh, Cyrene, since he's been involved with the excavations there for quite some time, which gave me an excuse to look at um, this collection of coins that purportedly were donated by um, Richard Norton, um, who excavated at Cyrene in 1910 and 1911. Um, and these roughly four or five, 600 coins 
that came into the ANS collection were purportedly from the excavations, but you know, ultimately I determined that they weren't, and there's a whole other story there. But you know, every every time I, I go looking, you know, at that collection of coins of Cyrene and North Africa, there's always always something new to discover and um always things that just seem you know a little little difficult to explain let's say yeah well and um uh in bmc kairanika uh um robinson certainly did address some of the coins from the norton collection because uh, some of them were apparently unique at least at that time yeah and so well, he included parts. them in the catalog yeah, in fact, one of the coins that the ANS did receive uh, from uh, Norton via um, Ed Edward Newell, who uh, appears to have had sort of a pick of the collection at some point, is one of those very rare uh, bronzes of Thibron. Um, you know, so we we do have one of those in our collection. Um, it's actually you know quite a nice coin. Hey, you're right. So. Oh. Okay, okay, I'm here. I'm here. I think. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I, so were there uh, any other questions? Uh, I don't see any. Um, so did anyone catch the uh, inside sulfium joke on the uh, sulfium plant that I showed on the slide? So there's a, a pharmacology professor from Turkey. His uh, last name is uh, Miski. And he had an article published in uh, a National Geographic years ago was that he found the sylphium plant but right. actually the plant he describes the photo i showed was on purpose because uh, the plant he found was a uh judiana which is uh, uh been known for a long time as uh anatolian sylphium so it's right. a related species but probably not the best and probably the best summary of uh looking for uh you know Remnants of uh, Sylphium is an article by uh, Lisa Briggs, and uh, it has the title of The Search for Sylphium. It's just uh, published yeah. in uh, 2022. Uh, she's an underwater archaeologist for the British Museum, and it's an excellent overview of some of these more recent reports where people think they found Sylphium, but the, the, they're actually related species. Yeah. And she brought up a great theory about perhaps someday uh, you know, in a shipwreck, or which of course, her special shipwreck archaeology, they may find some residue of a sylphium plant and, and be able to, uh, to do a genetic analysis. Uh, no, which, which would be what it actually was. Yeah, no, in fact, that, that would be fantastic because there, there still is, as you mentioned, a lot of discussion and debate over what, in fact, that plant was. And um, that uh, New York or National Geographic article that you mentioned, in fact, features some coins from the ANS collection because we had a uh, photographer from National Geographic here um, shooting some of the coins. So, so do check it out. It's it's a it's a fun article. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I saw the uh, I saw uh, uh, something from uh, Dan Wolf and uh, oh, uh, Dan, I'm, I'm sure you know more than I do about this, but uh, certainly uh, there is a lot of overstriking of coins in Kyrenaica, and particularly the bronzes from this period, because, you know, Magus was uh, governor for uh, Ptolemy the first, and then when he became independent, he would overstrike his coins on coins of, um, on, on the earlier coinage of uh, Ptolemy during his independent rule, and then when he re, you know, uh, reconciled and, and um, you know, became associated with the Ptolemaic Empire, they would sometimes overstrike his older coin. And so there's not enough time to go into the detail of it now, but you can establish uh, a pretty good sequence. And uh, Michael Ocelotti has done this in his, uh, on his book on um, Taranaka bronze coins. And um, David McDonald's also addressed this in his book on Greek coin overstrikes, uh, where you can establish a pretty good sequence uh, of the chronology of these different types based on the overstrikes. Yeah. Oh, you know, since you uh, just mentioned Asolati's book on the bronze coinage of Cyrene, just want to note that there is a brand new hot off the press second edition of that book. Um, just received a copy of it the other day from Michele, and it's, um, you know, is, uh, you know, updated and, and, uh, 
uh, de definitely worth taking a look at if, or getting a copy of and taking a look at if, uh, if you haven't already. Um, John, I'd like to thank you again very much for um, this wonderful presentation today.